Hey, Neil Homer with a thousand bits. Is that a question? If people cheer and ask questions, this might be might be more incentivizing. Let me see if I can get that. Or wait, no, it's it's Nile Homer. Nile as in file. Okay, you can't stay long. Okay, how would you go about learning a repertoire from a particular opening book? I find the multiple sidelines in the example games confusing. Um, yeah, all opening books are different. Some books are better organized than others. I guess what I can do is paste in the question as a new chapter. Add new chapter. Um, creating a repertoire from an opening book. Paste a comment. This will be hard to answer without actually like going through the process, but I can give you some tips. Um, the first and I think most important piece of advice I would give is save everything. Even if you're playing, playing stuff out using like a physical board, if you're creating a repertoire, you should save your analysis in a digital format. Lee Chess is great for that. Most people I recommend using Lee Chess because um, it auto saves and you can organize things. What I can do is just show you kind of the starting point. And then if you have follow up questions, you can, uh, you can feel, be, feel be, be free to ask in a later point. Um, and hopefully this will help anyone who maybe wants to learn from a book but wants to save everything they learn and be able to review it on their computer or tablet or phone. Um, so the, the first step in the process, create a new study. If it's a repertoire, then I recommend having one study for your white openings and one study for your black openings. Uh, so to make a study, you just go to leachhouse.org slash study, new study, I actually have many different repertoires saved for myself and for students. Uh, and sometimes you'll get to that point if you're playing different things or you're teaching. Um, but for most people, just create something that says black openings. And then every chapter should be a different variation. So I don't know if you're still in the chat or if you already left, but if there is a specific variation that you're studying, then or let's say a specific opening that you're studying. I'm trying to think of an example. Let's say a, a variation against the French, uh, one that I've played before, like Two Knights Attack. What I would do is create different chapters based on different, uh, different sequences. So let's say I'm learning the Two Knights Attack. Um, just create a chapter, Two Knights Attack. And then what I would do is, when I'm first starting, I just keep everything in one chapter, but then over time, I'll split it up. So two knights attack, for those who don't know, at least against the French, is when you develop two knights as early as possible. And within this opening, there are three main moves in this position for black. There is d4, there's d takes e4, and there's knight f6. There's also some lesser common moves like bishop b4 and knight, knight c6, which if you wanted to, you could maybe eventually study in your repertoire. But if you wanted to maybe prioritize learning the first, uh, first main lines, what I would do is create separate chapters for each, uh, each deviation that black can choose from. So, what I'll go ahead and do is label this, I'll actually change the name and just call this overview. And then I'll make another chapter, uh, two knights attack, what was the move number? Move three, three knight f6 is a main line. And then this chapter will be devoted to 
the main line resulting after knight f6. And then I would save the variations and, uh, and analysis which can stem from this position. So just to show, maybe to provide some value, I know there were some comments recently, people were asking for like a video series on the two knights attack, which I'm still working on. I'm actually thinking about creating a course on like a whole repertoire for white. Um, but just to show like some fun analysis, uh, this is one of the main lines where white controls the center with the pawns at first, but then very soon white is okay trading off the pawns. Like after c5, uh, white can take on c5. The main difference between this variation and like typical advanced variation of the French is that white doesn't have c3 in this position because the knight's on c3. So white's prioritizing development of the minor pieces. Uh, usually black plays knight c6, attacking e5. White can defend with bishop to f4. If I wanted to, I should point out that if you draw arrows or highlight in a study, everything saves. So if I were to review this later and I'm playing through the line, like the arrows just save. So sometimes that can be useful. So bishop f4, defending the pawn. And now a very common trap players will fall into is from this position, black will castle. And anyone who watches my stream religiously will have at least seen a few games I've played uh, in this line where white is just crushing after bishop takes h7. Uh, very nice example of the Greek gift where after king takes h7, knight g5, black is pretty much defenseless. Most players will play king g8 and then queen h5. If black wants to delay getting mated, he can play rook e8. But then white is mating in five, I think. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Um, so this probably applies more to higher level players where you're actually taking a, a much deeper approach and learning just beyond the first few moves of an opening. But this is really the first step in kind of building a repertoire, is saving kind of the, the skeleton variations and then seeing where things can deviate. Um, other great thing about Lee Chess is that we can, we can save all the, the different sublines too. Like I'll actually say that, um, okay, castling is, is of course a blunder. Uh, so we can highlight that just mistake. Oops, not bishop d3. D3 is very normal. Castling is a blunder. Uh, the main line here is pawn f6. And whenever you're building a repertoire, it's really important to stay organized because you can very easily get carried away and have like a bunch of different sublines in the notation and just be overwhelmed. Um, so usually the most popular or the best variation should be promoted to the main line. In this case, we can click make main line, and then in this specific position, white has to take. White actually gives away both center pawns, but keeps a pretty good grip on the center. Black usually takes back. And then if I'm teaching this to someone for the first time, usually I'll, I'll say play queen e2, and then I'll stop in this position, but then draw a bunch of arrows just to show the, the middle game ideas. Uh, from this position, white wants to castle queenside, usually go for knight e5, and then go for some kingside attack with g4, g5. Um, and there's some nice games which can demonstrate this, but sometimes when you're reading from an opening book, you want to decide what to save and what not to save. So sometimes you don't need to save a whole game, you just want to save kind of the skeleton variation and save the relevant sub-variations. And then over time, you can continue to add to, uh, to your analysis. Another nice line I'll go ahead and show. So I feel like anyone who wants to learn how to play against the French, this is a great option. And there's uh, a sneakier trap for white, starting with queen b6. After queen b6, it looks like black is winning a pawn, attacking b2 and f2. Um, usually if, if queen b6 is played, it's a good sign black is about to fall into the trap. Uh, white can castle here. 
Black will usually take on b2, thinking that white blundered. But now there's a very strong move for white, knight b5. Knight b5 not only attempts to trap the queen in many cases, but it's threatening knight c7. If bishop d6, or bishop to b6, and there's knight d6 check, which is pretty devastating. So I've had this position as well a few times on stream. And a lot of players will castle. And then white can still go for the Greek gift with bishop takes h7. Exclam. After king takes h7, knight g5, king g8. I, I like teaching this to students because the, um, the next move is really important. And most people who I show this to won't play the right move as white. Uh, so I'll pose this as a question to the chat. Uh, white to move, what's the best continuation? And let me shrink the alerts. Yeah. Okay, white to move. Uh, I see a couple wrong moves. Almost everyone is saying the wrong move. I think only one person has said the right move. Now a couple people saying the right move. Knight c7 doesn't hurt, says Biscuit Fiend. Um, yeah, to everyone saying queen h5, you're wrong. Let's start with queen h5 and then we'll get to the right move. Queen h5 is a blunder. Even though it looks similar to the previous line, white's threatening mate, if the rook moves, f7 falls. Uh, now black has a, a very nice and simple defense. Black can just take on c2, defending from a distance. And white sacrificed a bishop and just doesn't have a, a great follow-up to the attack. So... It's a clever response from black. I'm pretty sure there's been a handful of games played on Miches in this position. Switch databases. Yeah, 21 games. Black found queen takes e2, and black's just much better here. So the best move, which a few people found, is queen d3. Very similar idea. Threatening mate. Not too many options for black to defend. If black plays g6, which looks most natural, then white has queen h3. And now, okay, same idea, white's threatening mate, but in this case, because black played g6, it obstructs a diagonal for defense of the queen. And white's just mating here. I don't think there's any way to actually stop mate. Maybe there's one way to delay mate with bishop takes f2, but then there's king h1. So, okay, um, I think this was all based off of Niall Homer's question, which he, when he asked it, it was like 10 minutes ago, and then he said he had to go. Um, but hopefully that's a thorough answer, and hopefully people can gain some value from at least using a leech s study to create a repertoire. Uh, this is a very powerful tool. If you're reading from a book and you're using the book as kind of your main, um, your main sort of knowledge base, then you can also add some comments and annotations, which I encourage people to do. Sometimes I'm lazy to do it, but um, queen d3, we can say brilliant. Provoking black to play g6 and Constructing the b1 to h7 diagonal. So black's queen can't defend. Okay. And I recommend, especially for the players who want to try and like remember their, their openings, uh, I recommend having maybe some small comment with each move. Just sh like saying the purpose. Because if you know the purpose behind each move, even if you forget it, hopefully you understand what's going on and you can figure it out. Okay, Niall Homer is still here. Okay, that's good to see. Uh, someone asking about f5. 
oh, f5 after queen d3. Yeah, another variation. I think after f5, if we take on passant, there is knight takes, and knight, the knight would defend h7. So I'm thinking either knight takes e6 or queen h3. When I study openings, I usually try and use a bunch of different things between the database. If, if I'm looking at a book, I'll use the book analysis and then also Stockfish and then also my own brain. So sometimes what I would do here is I, I'd probably predict queen h3 is the best move. But then I would just verify with Stockfish. Stockfish is really good in these types of positions. Yeah, queen h3. And we can press spacebar if we're lazy and just spits out the stockfish line. Queen h7. Ah, rook b1 first. I don't like rook b1. Let's go for the kill. Here, here. Queen h8. Ah, now knight takes e6. Yeah, this is just so much fun for white. And we can safely say that white is winning. 